Is it better to buy an apartment or rent an apartment in Spain? A recent study has found that it pretty much always makes more financial sense to buy rather than to rent. But that's not the whole story and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right choice for you. So in this video, I'm going to talk you through the findings of this study, my thoughts on it and when is right to rent and when is right to buy. Let's get right into it. If you're new here, my name is Johnny. I'm originally from the UK, but I've been living and working in Madrid for the past four and a half years. I was renting an apartment when I moved here to Spain and I bought my current apartment about two years ago. So the study that I was talking about in the intro was carried out by popular Spanish property agent Tecnocasa and the Universitat Pompeu Fabra of Barcelona, which is one of the leading business and economics universities in Spain. The study looked at the financial implications of buying a property versus renting a property by comparing various factors such as rent versus interest payments, such as the monthly mortgage payment versus the monthly rent payment, etc. And so the study carried out two analyses. It carried out one looking at the long-term implications over a 25-year period starting in 2015, 2021 and 2023 and also a short-term analysis looking at one year again in 2015, 2021 and 2023. And so why these years in particular? So 2015 was kind of the first post-crisis year in Spain where the property market started to accelerate and grow a little bit. 2021 obviously a pandemic year but it was also one of the best if not the best year in terms of mortgage rates uh, in Spain. Spain and the wider EU as well in probably the past decade or maybe even a longer time period as well. That changed of course in 2022 and 2023 where central banks around the world increased interest rates to try and control inflation with the European Central Bank being one of them and as a result mortgage rates dramatically increased in 2023 in Spain. So these three years essentially represent different economic scenarios in Spain for the purposes of this comparison. And so keeping in mind that when you pay rent that is a pure expense that's money going out of your pocket into a landlord's pocket versus when you're paying a mortgage where part of it is interest cost that's going to the bank with the other part being capital uh, or equity that you're building up in the property over time. Typically at the start of the mortgage you'll be paying more in interest than you will be building equity but as time goes on with the mortgage then typically you'll be paying less interest on a yearly basis and you'll be building more and more equity as you get closer to the end of the mortgage. And so with that explanation in mind looking across 670 localities in Spain what the analysis does is it looks at what the typical rent would be paid over a period of time, whether it's 25 or one years, depending on which analysis we're looking at. And it will subtract the interest paid on the mortgage for a similar property. What that essentially then gives is the saving where a person to buy rather than rent a property. And the results are quite eye-opening. When you look over a period of 25 years, it doesn't matter which year you take as the starting reference for your 25 years, whether it's 2015, 2021, or 2023. But over that period of time, were you to buy a property instead of rent in Spain, the average saving for someone who buys instead of rents a property in Spain is between 100,000 and 150,000 euros. And in the table, if you look closely, that represents about 50% of purchases with between 20 and 30%, depending on the year, falling in the 150 to 200,000 euro savings in their purchase. What the study also finds as well is that the, typically the more expensive the city that you're buying in, the bigger the saving as well. So looking at the savings by city in the 100 to 150,000 savings, saving bracket, you have cities like Zaragoza, Córdoba, Murcia, and Valladolid. In the 150 to 200,000 euro bracket, you have cities like Alicante, Valencia, and Málaga. And if you're in Madrid and Barcelona, the saving could be of between 200 to 250,000 euros. And right at the top, where your saving could be up to 300,000 euros, is Bilbao. So the clear findings from the long-term analysis is that there are big savings to be had when you buy versus rent over a 25-year period. Now let's look at the short-term analysis, which looks at a period of one year and this instead of looking at the savings over a longer period of time it looks more at what the monthly mortgage payment versus the monthly rent payment is or was during that period of time. So in 2015 of the localities included in the analysis the rent payment was higher than the mortgage payment in 61% of the localities meaning that in 39% the mortgage payment was higher than the rent payment and if you look at the map you can see it's a little bit scattered there's no clear trend but typically the bigger cities are where you see the higher mortgage payment payment than the rent payment. Fast forward to 2021 when interest rates are at an all-time low and you see that that number increases to 72% where the mortgage payment is cheaper than the rent payment. And this is where a clearer trend emerges where the bigger cities are clearly where the mortgage payments are higher than the rent payments and that is in around 28% of the cases. And then in 2023 when interest rates go up everything kind of reverses. So in 82% of the localities the mortgage payment is 
is higher than the rent payment. And in only 18% of localities, the mortgage payment is lower than the rent. It's a very different property market as well to the likes of the UK or the US, where perhaps from a financial perspective, it is actually cheaper to rent depending on, you know, the situation, any assumptions that you're taking when you're carrying out the analysis. But in Spain, there's a clear outcome here, according to this uh, analysis. And some of you watching the video as well, you may be cash buyers, you may not even be looking to, to get a mortgage when you buy a property in Spain. And in that case, you know, the saving just, it, it becomes even bigger from that perspective. There are, however, some limitations in the study that are important to take into account account is that this just looks at the mortgage aspect of owning a property. It doesn't look at other costs that come associated with home ownership like ITP or VAT when you buy a property depending on whether it's new or secondhand. It doesn't take into account any comunidad or property tax that you may have to pay as well which can add to the cost of owning a property. It doesn't take into account the fact that you know your property may need works or repairs from time to time or that you may be buying it to do a full renovation and refurbishment. So these are all things that the study doesn't take into account that increase the cost of ownership. And whilst you'll still probably come out with a saving, it might not be as high as what is said in the study. And you got to keep in mind as well that probably the average buyer in this study is considered to be someone who lives and works and resides in Spain full time. Whereas for some people watching the video, you know, that may not be the case. You may be part time residents, you may be coming to visit the country from time to time. You may not be coming to Spain to work. You may be on, you know, passive income visa or you may be a retiree living in Spain. So the profile of a foreigner who's looking to come to Spain or maybe to buy a property in Spain doesn't necessarily fit the same profile, the same needs as someone who is ordinarily resident in Spain and maybe lives and works here full time. At the same time, foreign buyers are not necessarily as familiar with the property market. They're not necessarily familiar with how process of buying a property goes in Spain. They maybe don't know who to contact, who to work with. They maybe don't necessarily speak Spanish as well. And all these factors combined together, you know, it can perhaps increase the risk of something going wrong in a purchase. If you're not familiar with the market, you don't know what you're looking for. Essentially, there's a bigger risk that a foreigner, someone who's not familiar with the property market or how things are done in Spain, could make a mistake or overlook something critical when buying a property than someone who's resident in Spain. Not in all cases, but I would say it's perhaps higher risk. Now, outside of the study, there are a few other interesting points to add, one of which being kind of the scarcity of properties in Spain. There is a very high demand for properties in Spain, especially in the big cities, and it's driving prices up. It means it's becoming more and more expensive to buy properties and a lot of young people especially are being priced out of the property market uh, as a result of that because they don't necessarily have the financial means or the savings that they would need to be able to buy a property of their own. And at the same time, a contributor to an article on Idealista mentioned that the new housing law, the Ley Vivienda, is having a very negative impact on the rental market in terms of the competition it's creating between different people who are looking for new rental apartments, where essentially the people with the best financial situation in terms of income and in terms of how long they've been at their company are the ones that are typically going to get picked over over some other people when it comes to looking for a rental property. So it's very difficult for young people right now. That said, there is some hope now that there are some incentives from both the government and the banks to try and help young people buy their first property, whether it's the government of the autonomous region where the person is living, acting as a guarantor for the loan for the first few years, whether it's the bank giving them a 95% mortgage, for example. All of these things we're starting to see become a little bit more accessible for young people. And on the renting side, there's also the bono alquiler, which has been talked about, which helps young people pay the rent and become independent and move out into their own place. So drawing all that together, what is the right option for you? First, let's talk about the good reasons to buy a property. So if you're coming to Spain or you've been in Spain for a long time, you're quite familiar with the country, you're familiar with a particular area or a city, and you know you want to stay there pretty long term, then this can be a good reason to buy a property. Or perhaps if you see property as an investment and you're looking to visit part time, and maybe rent it out while you're not there, then this can be another reason to buy as well because it will essentially be an income generating asset in this circumstance as well. And perhaps if you've got a lot of cash in hand, maybe you're a retiree or you're on the non-lucrative visa uh, or even the golden visa, maybe you're looking to you know, stay in Spain long term and you don't want to feel uncomfortable by having to pay rent, then in this case, you know, maybe a cash purchase of a property could be something that you look into as well. Thinking about my own reasons for buying this property, it was because I decided that I was going to stay in Spain medium to long term 
and in the case that I did move away, then I would always have this property, which is in a location where it could be rented out and it could generate income for me. So I did see it as a long-term purchase. I've done a lot of research, spoken with a lot of agents, lawyers, etc., um, to make sure that I knew exactly what I was getting into and that the purchase that I was making was right for me and that there was nothing kind of from the legal aspect that I'd overlooked. So if you're looking to buy, the key things to keep in mind is to have a clear plan or intentions for what it is you're going to use the property for, what you're going to do with it, and definitely, definitely do your research. Take your time to do your research as well. Don't rush in because an opportunity looks good. There are other properties out there. Now let's look at some of the reasons why you might choose to rent over buying a place. If you're new to Spain, you don't know much about the country, it's your first time here, and it's probably the first thing that comes to mind. As you may see, buying is something that involves a lot of risk, and you may be quite unfamiliar with it. So renting can be a much easier alternative, particularly, you know, when you're just coming to Spain. Maybe you want the flexibility, you know, you come into Spain, you're going to be here for six months, a year, two years, or maybe you're, you know, a digital nomad, you travel around a lot. So for you, it doesn't make sense to commit to such a big purchase like a property, then renting in this case might make more sense as well. Or even if you're coming to Spain, you want to explore the country, you want to move around a little bit, get to know different cities, different neighborhoods better before you make a decision on where to purchase, then renting can be a good way to kind of fill that time whilst you do your exploration and your research and make a decision. And finally, if you don't want to deal with the hassle of being a property owner as well, like paying council tax, uh, attending like comunidad meetings where you talk about, you know, common issues, wherever you are in the world, owning a home comes with responsibility. And particularly if you're in a country where you're not familiar with how things are done, or you maybe struggle with the language, then that can perhaps be a challenge as a property owner. When I was renting, I rented two different apartments in the center of Madrid. And for me, yeah, it was pretty much my way into the country because definitely when I moved to Spain, when I was only 25 years old, I didn't have the financial means to be able to buy, nor did I think I was going to have them in the near future. So renting was kind of the only option I looked at as well. But beyond that, let's say that I did have the means, you know, I still probably would have chose to rent because I would have been new in the country. I would have wanted to, you know, get familiar with where I am first before I make a decision on, on a property to buy. Anyways, those are my thoughts, guys. I hope you found this video interesting and helpful when it comes to taking a decision on whether to rent or buy. Leave a comment and let me know which one you are deciding to do. Till next time, I'll see you in the next one and let's get this money.